Hello lads, welcome to a surprisingly bright day in the UK. We've actually got sunshine for once. It, I think it's been about two months since I've seen any sun at all, so welcome. And welcome to a new video talking about ways to get better MPG in your car, if you can. Now, if you're an utter like me and you like just accelerating everywhere, up to the speed limit and safely, of course, then you won't care that much about miles per gallon, but maybe when you're running out of fuel and you need to eke out every little bit of mileage or you just want to save some money there are a few ways you can drive and look after your car which save you a few miles every time you fill up the car so the first thing we want to talk about is getting your gear changes right you don't want to change up when you're accelerating too slowly or too quickly you need to kind of get it right and you don't want to be lugging the engine so your car's vibrating and shuddering uh, because that can be damaging things like the crankshaft and in your engine you just generally don't want to be doing that for the health of your engine anyway and you don't want to be revving it too high like there is a misconception that you don't that you have to accelerate everywhere slowly to get good mpg but you don't really you can use some of the power of your car that's absolutely fine if we'll get used to the sweet spot of your engine but on most cars it's around two and a half thousand rpm around about there to get sort of eco gear changes if you want to accelerate quickly and get the best mpg out of your car in combo then you're going to want to change gear at the peak torque of your engine rather than the peak horsepower of your engine so for example my car my peak torque is about 4000 rpm you'd want to change there if you're going quickly and trying to save uh, fuel at the same time which sounds like a strange thing but start to learn when your engine likes to change gear and when it doesn't struggle the sort of lowest you can change without it lugging and sort of feeling like it's unhappy something you'll just learn through experience though and getting out and, and feeling your car and listening out to how it sounds too get your tire pressures right too low a tire pressure creates more rolling resistance and increases your mpg maybe only by a little bit but a couple of miles per gallon at a time makes a difference and adds up on your wallet too so check your handbook check the recommended specs of your tires it should be around 30 ish psi but check your specs plus it's it's good for safety anyway it's better grip uh, and better in wet conditions to get your tire pressures right you don't want to be running low anyway there's no need unless you're bloody off-roading basic things like keeping your car up to date with maintenance fresh oil uh, new filters all sorts of things like that basically just reduce the in engine resistance it might only be one or two extra miles per gallon at a time but if you're combining this up with the right tire pressures uh, proper maintenance it all starts to stack up a little bit higher you should be doing this anyway as a no-brainer so it just is another reason for you to get that engine serviced air resistance too is another key factor when it comes to miles per gallon take off any roof racks if you've got them if you don't need them uh, things like towing mirrors if you use them uh, anything like that keep windows shut really as well open windows will increase the air resistance and decrease your fuel mileage also air conditioning that's a key factor if you have that on it is a sort of drag on the engine so turn that off and you will get better mileage if you can cope with the heat people say it's better when you're going quickly to have your windows shut and the air conditioning on than the windows open as the drag would create more of a loss than the air conditioning if you're going slowly it might be better to have the windows down however if you really need to get some cold air in weight two start going to the gym lose a little bit of weight every bit of weight in your car adds up and removes the uh, healthy mpg from your car so take any shit you have out the back of the car your car has to use more petrol to push you along the road you can get lighter weight rims if you can remove weight if you want to go full race car and take the back seats out do all sorts of fun things like that then that will help too if you care to lose the back seats and bits of trim some people go to the extremes you don't have to however there's also kind of a controversial point about premium fuels so higher octane fuels uh, will generally get you better mpg However, of course, they're more expensive, so it depends whether you want to save money or not. It depends on the price of the fuel and how much MPG you actually get back from it. But it can be worth it to use premium fuels instead of standard, sort of lower octane. You, you'll have to experiment around with how your car reacts to this, because some cars will get dramatically better MPG than others when they're using higher octane fuels. So give it a go, and you might find it actually makes more of a difference than uh, the price offset so my car gets like two or three mpg more on premium and a little bit more power too which kind of 
makes it useless because I then want to use the power and I get 20 miles per gallon. Also, when it comes to getting better MPG, your driving style makes a big, big difference. Obviously, we've talked about uh, when to change gear and changing gear earlier and at the sort of sweet spot of your engine will generally get you better miles per gallon. But when you're driving, you want to avoid harsh braking. You want to avoid coming to a full stop, really, if you can, because starting up and getting going again tends to suck more fuel than uh, carrying on and maintaining an average speed. Like on the motorway, if it's start-stop motorway traffic, you'll use a lot more fuel than if you're just consistently bombing down the motorway at 70 mile an hour. Obviously, lesser speeds, 60 mile an hour, 50 mile an hour, will use a lot less fuel, um, but it depends how quickly you need to get to places too. Not all of us have a million hours to get everywhere. That doesn't mean you have to, you can just be smoother with the accelerator, look ahead in the road so you don't have to come to a full stop as much and accelerate back up to road speed consistently. You just want to be gentle, smooth. You can use some of the power of your car but don't stab the throttle, don't sort of be jerky with your movements. You've just got to be consistently smooth and read the road. You can use hills too, you can use hills to coast down and kind of compensate for if there's a hill after that. It's a sort of dark art and you can look into hypermiling and I've never really been much into it myself. Um, but trying to get better MPG is definitely a, uh, a handy thing, especially in my case, it's normally when I'm running out of fuel and I need to get to a petrol station 10 miles away with the five miles reading on my tank. So guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. It was just a little short one, a few little tips about MPG and I hope you got a few things out of it. Remember to like the video and subscribe if you are new. Comment down below what you would like to see in future videos and thank you for watching. Drive safe and I will see you soon. Peace.